This video is part of Project Middle East, a multi-channel collaboration of various historical YouTubers focusing on one video topic. Link to the playlist is in the top right of your screen and in the description. Enjoy! Hello and welcome back to another video, my name is Jake the Genealogist, and welcome to my channel if you haven't watched one of my videos before. Now in today's, I will be tackling the intertwined histories and family trees of the Omani and Zanzibari Sultanates. So, a little background. Now, this family tree only starts with the founding of the House of Busaid in 1744, or 1749, but we'll get into that. However, before that, the Imamid of Oman ruled over the peninsula for around a thousand years starting in 751. If you would like to see the family trees of those earlier dynasties, let me know in the comments. Now that that's cleared up, though, we'll start with the first sultan of Oman, Ahmad bin Said. Now, bin Said wasn't actually of any royal descent, but he did become a governor in the port town of Sohar. When the last imam, or rather the last to really hold serious power, Saif bin Sultan II died, the Persians began to encroach on Oman's territory, for a short while until they were actually massacred by bin Said. Despite this, the previous Yaruba dynasty stayed in power. However, by 1749, through, dare I say, a lot of military conflict and games of who's the rightful leader, Ahmad officially won out. It's worth mentioning there's a lot of nitty-gritty that I'm skipping out on for the sake of just getting on with the video and not boring you. Now, even though it took bloodshed to get the throne, Bin Said's reign of 39 years was mostly peaceful, establishing a capital at Rustak, starting a standing army and navy, and most people rightly supporting him for liberating them from the Persians. Ahmad was succeeded by his son, Said bin Ahmad, in 1783 upon his death. Said's reign was actually a stark contrast to his father's. Even though none of his many brothers challenged the throne at first, bin Ahmad's reign would be plagued by it. Multiple revolts occurred, led by his brothers to overthrow him. All of them, though, were unsuccessful. Eventually, bin Ahmad gave up most of his power to his son, Hamad bin Said, in 1786, and remained his imam, now purely a religious title, in Rustak until his death in 1803. Now, his son did not really see much time on the throne either, dying in 1792 from smallpox, whereupon he had no children and was succeeded by his uncle, Sultan bin Ahmad, who was one of the brothers who revolted. Now, Bin Ahmad mostly did nothing during his reign. He settled family disputes, but Oman also got invaded by the Sunniist Wahhabi movement. He died suddenly in 1804 and was succeeded by his son, Salim bin Sultan, with a regent appointed to rule for him. Salim didn't last long either, though, as he had to put down yet another revolt of one of Said bin Ahmad's brothers, this time Qais bin Ahmad. He agreed to give up control, in this case, to his more eager brother Said bin Sultan, who maybe definitely murdered one of their allies. Now, believe it or not, this is actually where stability comes to Oman. Now, bin Sultan, known as the Lion of Oman, has widely been considered arguably the greatest leader in Oman's history. Now, just to note a few of his major achievements, he expanded Oman to encompass much of the Swahili coast, including moving his capital to the city of Zanzibar. He established a treaty with the U.S., and also, Oman reached its territorial and economic peak at this time. Well, not counting the 1970s to present, with oil and everything. Now, Bin Sultan reigned for a staggering 49, or 52, depending on how you count years, and upon his death in 1856, a big decision was made. Oman was officially split between two sons. His son, Thuwaini, hope I'm pronouncing that right, got the throne of Oman, whereas his brother, Majid, got the throne of Zanzibar, making them two separate sultanates. And from then on out, Oman and Zanzibar acted as two distinct places. In fact, even during Fuwaini's reign, Oman faced a financial crisis. However, Zanzibar, which was much wealthier, didn't help them out at all. Zanzibar faced a lot of scrutiny, though, as their ruler Majid actually continued the slave trade. Yes, you heard that correctly. Although he did spread Islam to Eastern Africa. Now, back to Oman. So, after several short-lived rulers, like these guys right here, Fuwaini's brother... Turkey bin Said won the Battle of Donk in 1870 and settled in for a decent length reign. His son, though, Faisal bin Turkey, would not have the same luck. 
As imperialism ran wild throughout Europe, both France and Britain wanted control over much of the Middle East, something they would get following World War I. Because of Britain and France nudging him for an alliance, the Omani people gradually lost trust in him, and he began to lose much authority, especially in the country's interior, by 1903. As he was denied abdication by the British, he had to stick out the rest of his miserable reign with no power. Eventually, in 1913, his son took the throne, Taimar bin Faisal, and he was finally able to settle these disputes by 1920. The Treaty of Sib finally set aside differences between the Sultan of Muscat, as it was called at this point, and the Omani Imamate, at least temporarily. Unfortunately, though, Oman sunk into fervor problems as they got plunged into poor financial debt near the end of its reign. However, this was all to change, as his son, Saeed bin Taimur, fixed these problems. And although he inherited the throne young at just 21 years old, he actually re-established diplomatic alliances with the U.S. and other countries, officially united Muscat and Oman in 1951, with British agreement, and even ended the Omani Imamate in 1959, which at that point was nothing but trouble for stability. Unfortunately, he was corrupted by oil money, leading Oman to become a shit show in the 1960s and 70s for poverty rates, child mortality, and widespread disease. Seriously, 25% of children under the age of 5 died. It's not good at all. Saeed, unsurprisingly, was overthrown in a bloodless coup by his own son, Kabus, in 1970, which, looking back, was definitely for the best. Goodbye, Sultan of Mescat. Hello, Sultan of Oman. Kabus finally modernized the country and ended rebellion and set up a stable government, although still absolute monarchy. And after a long 50 years reign, where he was immensely popular, he died just two years ago and was succeeded by his cousin, Haytham, who was the current ruler. It took a while, but Oman was transformed from a weak state kicked around by imperial powers in the early 20th century to become one of the premier countries in the entire Arabian Peninsula in the modern day. Well, what about Zanzibar, you might ask? Well, since this video is first and foremost about the Middle East, I'll give you a brief explanation. Well, Zanzibar ultimately ended the slave trade after the death of this guy, during the reign of this guy, Bargash bin Said, in the 1870s, but eventually they came under the influence of the German East Africa Company in the 1880s, just around these guys' reigns which took control of the bordering area of Tanganyika. By 1890, though, under the reign of another brother, Ali bin Said, Zanzibar was instead actually taken by the British, not wanting to avoid an easy land grab. During this time, the shortest war actually happened. Look it up. Other than that, though, most of the rulers from then on out just accepted British sovereignty. All these rulers right here. Uh, that is, until 1963, upon the death of Abdullah bin Khalifa, when the independent sultanate of Zanzibar is proclaimed. Except that lasted just about a year until the last ruler, Jamshid bin Abdullah, was overthrown. Zanzibar and Tanganyika ended up actually merging in the same year to form Tanzania. Amazingly enough, too, Jamshid is still actually alive to this day at the age of 92. And, um, in recent news, well, I guess two-year-old news, he was actually just recently invited by his distant cousin, Haytham, right here, to retire in Oman, to live out the rest of his days. And I think that brings this video to a nice close, connecting both sultanates. Now, if you enjoyed this, please give it a like, it would be much appreciated. And also check out the rest of the playlist in the end card and in the description. See ya!